You may have heard the saying, life is a roller coaster. It may sound a little cliche, but there is truth to this phrase. Life is made up of good times and hard times. We experience both its highs and lows. As Christians, we are not immune to the hardships of life. In fact, many would argue that we face more hardships than non-Christians. After all, the Bible does say, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. In Psalm 34, verse 19. Now, I'm telling you this not so that you would be discouraged, but rather that you would be grounded in your perspective. Loving Jesus Christ, living for Jesus Christ, doesn't mean you'll have a life free from any problems. Equally, when you face challenges or pain, this doesn't mean the Lord loves you any less than someone else. You see, God doesn't promise us a life devoid of suffering, pain, problems, or difficult situations. As a matter of fact, he tells us the opposite. In John chapter 16, verse 33, Jesus tells us that in the world we will have troubles or tribulation. And throughout scripture, we are reminded by the apostles as well as Jesus himself that Christians will suffer, be persecuted, face many trials, and so on. They don't tell us this so that we could be miserable or feel anxious, but to remind us of our reality and to encourage us to stay strong in our faith. After Jesus warns us of the many troubles we are to face, in the same verse, he commands us to be of good cheer, for he has overcome the world. And so, I may not know what you're going through, but be of good cheer because in Jesus, you are an overcomer. Things might be tough right now, but be of good cheer. Have faith in the Lord and he will see you through. You may be in a dark place right now, but be of good cheer. Keep holding on to Jesus. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Not only does God want us to be of good cheer, but he also wants us to turn to him in prayer during difficult times. In fact, tough times can motivate us or prompt us to pursue God through prayer more passionately and desperately. When we are in any kind of trouble, we tend to become aware of how weak and limited we are on our own. We feel helpless we realize how much we need the Lord to intervene. When you are in a difficult place, you will find that you are desperate for God's presence so that you can draw from his strength. On the other hand, we could sometimes be so weighed down by our burdens and problems that we don't have the energy or motivation to approach the Lord in prayer. But that is just Satan trying to do all that he possibly can to keep us miserable and without hope. He doesn't want us to seek God and he doesn't want God to help us out of our dire situation. Don't be deceived by him. When hardships come your way, go to the one who can rescue you. Go back to your first love. Seek him through prayer. James 5.13 gives us the best advice. Here, the Apostle James gives this piece of advice. Is anyone among you suffering? Then he must pray. The Bible is filled with examples of God's people praying through very difficult times in their lives. Hezekiah is one example. Isaiah prophesied that Hezekiah was going to die soon. He even asked him to prepare for his imminent death. Can you imagine how Hezekiah felt at that moment, being told by a prophet that he was about to die? If he were to tear his clothes and put ashes on his head, nobody could even blame him. But what did he do instead? Isaiah 38 verse 2 says that Hezekiah 
turned his face toward the wall and prayed to the Lord. And you know what? The Lord heard Hezekiah's prayer. The Lord saw his tears and extended his life by another 15 years. Another similar example is Hannah, a woman who was barren. She desperately longed for a son to the point where she would weep continuously and wouldn't eat for a long time. Even her husband noticed it and was very concerned for her. One day, in the bitterness of her soul, she went to the temple and prayed to the Lord, weeping in anguish. She brought a request to the Lord, pouring her heart out to him and asking him to grant her a male child, vowing that she would dedicate his whole life to serving the Lord. God heard her too and granted her petition, a son named Samuel, who became one of the greatest prophets. The apostles had their fair shares of suffering and hardships too. In Acts 16, Paul and Silas were thrown into prison for preaching about Jesus. And guess what they did? They prayed and sang hymns to God while they were imprisoned. The prisoners heard them and the earth quaked underneath them, loosening their chains. All these events led to the prison guard and his family believing in Jesus and therefore finding salvation as well as the apostles later being released from prison. What a testament to the power of prayer. So, if Hezekiah could pray after a death sentence and Hannah dared to ask God to open her womb and Paul and Silas praised God during their imprisonment after they had been beaten. What's stopping us from praying when we face difficult situations? All these people were pushed to pray because of the trials that they went through and the obstacles they faced. Let us be encouraged to do the same. When we encounter tough times, let us not be overwhelmed to the point where we feel hopeless and discouraged. Let us not run away from our problems, but instead run to Him. Let's run to Jesus Christ. Run to the one who has overcome the world, the one who is our refuge and strength, the one who tells us to call upon Him in the day of trouble, the one who rescues us, the one who heals our wounds and diseases. We need to seek Him in all circumstances, especially through this life's hardships. Jesus Christ is our comforter and our very present help in times of trouble, the only help we will ever need. Yes, as humans, we still have feelings and emotions. Nobody can deny that. God doesn't expect us to be laughing and dancing all the time, but what He does want from us is our commitment to Him. What God does want from us is faith. He wants us to be invested in Him so that we run to Him first when troubles come our way. God shouldn't be our last resort, but our first choice in all situations. And all those negative feelings and thoughts that we have when we're going through rough patches, prayer helps change them too. Paul advises us in Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7, to be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The peace of God is above our understanding, and we can rest assured knowing that whatever burdens, hardships, problems, or troubles we face, we can lay them at the foot of the cross. Lay them all down at Jesus' feet and watch all your worries begin to fade away and be replaced by his incredible peace. Lord Jesus, 
you are worthy to receive all of my praise and adoration. If troubles weigh us down, your mercy, your grace, will lift us up, although the hardships of life may push us to our limits, by your mercy and by your grace, Lord, we will overcome. Father, the situations we face at times may be tragic and heartbreaking, but we look to you, Lord. By your mercy and by your grace, we are more than conquerors. May your divine will be accomplished in my life. If the trial I face is meant to shape me and mold me in a way that is more pleasing to you, then may your will be done. If the trial I face is meant to build my faith and build my character, then may your will be done, Lord. If the trial I face is meant to train me to become more patient, more prayerful, more grateful, then may your will be done. Father, whatever your will is for allowing me to face difficulty, may you achieve within me that which you have set out to achieve. Transform me, renew me, teach me. Whatever the objective is, I surrender to you, Lord Jesus. Psalms 102 verse 1 and 2 say, Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let my cry come to you. Do not hide your face from me in the day of my distress. Incline your ear to me. Answer me speedily in the day when I call. Lord, hear our cry. When we encounter difficulty, when we're caught in trouble, deliver us and be our help, Father. Your word in James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4 says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Father, if I am to face difficult times, if... I am to endure tough times. May it all be for your glory. I pray that you would use any difficult challenges to build my character. Use those afflictions to strengthen my faith, Lord. Help me to understand that sometimes you may allow afflictions into my life so that I may grow spiritually, so that I may learn to pray with more intensity. Lord, I understand that you are more concerned about my character than my comfort levels. You care more about my growth as a believer than the number of blessings I receive. You, Lord, are more concerned with the state of my heart than the level of my comfort. Your word in Isaiah 40 verse 29 says, He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. It's in you that I can have victory. It's only through you that I can be a victor. Without you, Lord Jesus, there are giants I can't fight with my own strength. There are situations that are just too much for me to handle. So I ask that you stand by me, Lord, now and always. Whether I am in a storm or in the valley or in the shadow of death, be with me, Father. Whether I am in a fiery furnace or in the lion's den, I pray that you would raise up a standard. When the enemy comes at me like a flood, Lord Jesus, I look to you. I look to your saving grace. Your word in Psalms 121 verse 7 and 8 says, The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. So when the devil attempts to attack me, I will hold on to this word that you, Lord, will keep me from all evil. You will preserve my life. You will not allow any strongholds to overcome me. Though my problems may be daunting, I am at peace knowing that you are with me, Lord Jesus. You have promised that you would never leave me or forsake me. 
So even when the odds are against me, I will count on you, Lord Jesus. Whether I am in the lion's den or in the eye of the storm, you are faithful. And I believe you will be with me and protect me. May you be glorified forever and ever. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let my cry come to you. Do not hide your face from me in the day of my distress. Incline your ear to me. Answer me speedily in the day when I call. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing.